Hi everyone, uh, happy mid-month April. So I just wrapped up the Cozy Club writing retreat last week and I recorded a secret video, if you are in Planner Pixies, on a recap of that, how much we made, how much it cost us, uh, things I would have done differently, and also my plans for future events. So. I think I went on for, four, I thought it was going to be a quick video, but I went on for like 44 minutes yesterday and I did repeat myself a lot. So sorry about that. But uh, all of that information and all the slides are available for you inside of Planner Pixies. So today's workbook is something that I meant to upload to YouTube. And uh, right before I just realized that's why I'm late, I didn't do that. So I will leave a link for you. Um, actually, I think I can just add a comment. Can I add a comment? I think I can. Let's see. Uh, download the workbook at... Aha! It worked. Hopefully. <laughs> so it is in the comments. Um, I'll leave it in the description as well if I can figure out how to do that. I just thought I'd check in because I've been like radio silent for the beginning of the month. I was, you know, uh, we were planning this retreat for a year. And of course, like at the last minute, I was like, I still have things that I need to do to prep for this. So that's what happened that's basically all we did the week before uh was prep for this and then we had the event and so this is like the first time i've like i'm like let me get organized and figure out oh i don't think i can edit this while um while i'm doing it uh get the workbook here we go let's see i don't know if i can edit this while i'm going get the workbook at all right, fingers crossed it worked. Okay, so, uh, oh, anyways, here's the workbook. Um, I just did kind of like a little mid-month check-in for, you know, there's four lives this month. So we did the April plan with me. We did, today's the mid-month check-in, and I have an interview with Brenda Cadman, who is an expert on Canva, and also an interview with Amber Housley, whose course I took, Invite and Delight, on how to actually throw a retreat. So. All of that is happening this month uh, on this channel. Whoops, I don't know what I've done. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, all right, so recap, we're just gonna, so it, this looks very familiar to the weekly Monday motivations. Um, just like, what have you done so far this month? Uh, what your goal is, like, I honestly, even though I like make one goal, I totally forgot what it was. I, this happens to me all the time. So also, this is like, do you need things to help you get closer to your goal? Uh, and then just a weekly planner for this week, for next week, and then pretty much the 29th, you have the 29th and 30th, and then it's time for May. So we're gonna do a May plan with me. Uh, but you have a good half month left um, in there. So let's just go through the slides that I have for today. Um, we are exactly halfway because there are 30 days in the month of April. And oh, now that I know how to use, do I know how to use comments? They just disappeared on me. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Who's here? Oh, that's so weird that it does that. Uh, Dawn is here. I don't know. Can I show these? Oh, there we go. Tasha's. is, oh, I see what I did. Kind of. Do I know what I'm doing? Very rarely. Okay, there we go. Where did my slides go? Oh, there. I know how to use a computer. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, Shelly. Um, and Karen's here. Tasha's here. Uh, who else is here? And Donna's here. Great. All right. And there. All right. So uh, so here would be my advice, and it's probably also my advice to me, is decide what you want to do between now and the end of the month. Uh, so we haven't done one of these in a while. Um, we have the mid-month check-in. I don't know how often people actually go through these. I know I am guilty of not going through these. So I think this will be good to do this together. I don't know. I just became out of, out of focus. There we go. Um, all right, the workbook, uh, we already went through that. Oh, yeah, so always a good idea to revisit the methods. 
I obviously really like my name. So the Lisa method was in the January um, plan with me. And then also the Speedy Goals was in the January plan with me. That had its own workbook just for Speedy Goals. Uh, and that's just if you need a little help or direction or just like filling out worksheets, which I know I do because it just kind of like gives me, it helps me stay on track uh, and like direct my focus and my thoughts all into one area. So what was my goal? So my goal was I was going to finish up the Lisa Seifert website and then work on the Pretty Fabulous website. So I didn't do any of that because I had a cozy club getaway to plan and I didn't do that. So that's why I was like, oh my God, let me finish all the last minute things I need to do for the cozy club getaway because it's happening whether I'm ready or not. Uh, and also, yeah, and Molly was coming into town. So let's just recap what happened last month. And I actually have a lot of things and I noticed that because I quit social media uh, back in what, the end of March or whatever it was. So every time I was like, oh, I could post something, I was like, oh, wait, I'm not on social media. So I'll just save it for my mid-month check-in. So we might end up doing weekly check-ins. Uh, I do want to do a weekly newsletter. Again, I think because I am not on social media as much, which I am very, I'm still very happy about, I think it would be nicer to use some of that extra time, one, to get things done, but also to maybe start a newsletter again, which I used to do and I've just kind of been lax about. Um, so my March goal was, is, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. It's, I'm going to have to change it because I had other things that I wanted to do this month. So we'll talk about this. Um, I am glad this is over because it was kind of like, you know how when you have something that like an event or a presentation and you have other things that you're doing, but you always feel, it's kind of like social media. I just feel guilty about not doing that one thing. And then it's hard to really get into another project. So I'm super happy that this was over. So now I can focus on other things. And honestly, we had it in April because I thought, it's so funny. I thought we picked April so that Molly, uh, Molly picked April. Um, I thought we were gonna do it in February, but she wanted to, I think it was timing with school and the kids and when she had the kids or didn't have the kids. Um, so yeah, I thought she was gonna do it when she didn't have the kids so that then she could have, see her kids more often. I don't know, but she didn't so that the kids were helping with the husband, with the baby. Yeah, I don't, I don't have children, so I don't know. <laughs> I guess she said it was perfectly how she wanted it to work out. So, um, so that was good because I didn't want her to feel like I had pushed a date on her because she has a much more rigid schedule with the uh, sharing kids for uh, custody and everything. So. I did do a book club summary. So that was another secret video I posted on Saturday. Uh, I really liked it. It had a new perspective on procrastination versus those hardcore like, hey, just work harder, quit being such a loser. And it didn't do that. It had more of an upbeat, positive message and just new thoughts on why people procrastinate. Uh, Mystery Mingle podcast, I did fit in three uh, live streams right before the the week for the event. Um, and we have four more to go. And I did do one this morning already with Jen Pitts. I can tell, this helps so much. I can't even tell you. I So what happened was, I mentioned this a few months ago, Lisa London was demonetized. So your YouTube channel, to get it monetized means you can run Google ads on it and you get money for it. So I posted a goodbye video like four years ago. And then I sporadically posted there, but not really a lot, like one or two. And so finally I got a notice, I think it was in December of last year. They're like, hey, if you don't post more videos, we're gonna demonetize this channel. So I put it on my to-do list, but like everything else on my to-do list, it just, I don't even know what happened and I didn't do it. And then this year I tried to make a half-hearted attempt to do like author tutorials because I do like doing tutorials and it just wasn't enough videos and it still wasn't getting monetized. So I was like, you know what, just forget it. Like it's just too much trouble to do. I was like, what am I doing? I'm trying to simplify stuff and I'm going to keep three YouTube channels. So the hard part was if you look at Lisa London, it has 20,000 subscribers versus my Lisa Seifert doesn't even have, it has almost 10,000, it's like a little over nine. And so it just felt like vanity numbers where I was like, oh, I should keep that 20,000 subscriber channel because clearly everyone's going there uh, versus this smaller Lisa Seifert channel. But at the end of the day, it's just too much to maintain both of those channels. And I don't even write romance anymore. It would be different if I was still actively writing romance or I plan to write some big epic 
romance trilogy or something, but I'm not. And so, um, and even all of the books that did well, the reverse harems were all taken down because uh, those were co-written with Alana. So the, she took those down and then I just took my book down because it didn't make sense. It was like a spinoff of the series. So anyways, I have taken every, when you go to Lisa London now, it is empty. I've taken every single video off there except the live streams. The live streams I just turned off and made them private. Like nobody's watching those anyway, they're so old. So I took, uh, there were 114 videos delete, like didn't delete, they just made them all private, downloaded them and then uploaded them again to Lisa Seifert. So it's a little confusing because if you look at Lisa Seifert, it's like, oh, she posted 114 new videos last week. I did not record and post 114 videos. That would be pretty impressive if I had, but I did not. So, um, and yeah, they're outdated, they're kind of old, but I really like them and some of them are still valuable. So I just moved everything over. So everything is now on the Lisa Seifert channel. So. Um, I say migrating, but it's done. I finished it, so yay. <laughs> um, I also rearranged my office space, which I'm sure, it probably doesn't matter to you, but what I had done, so at the top, if you look, there's like this nice little runway for Lucky. So like, all he loves kitty tunnels. So all of his tunnels were in the middle. He could run back and forth. Um, and it worked okay for a while. And then, you know, I realized that like having my day bed was like the happy place for me and Lucky to like hang out at the end of the day. So this is my regular desk. I sit here, he sits on his little kitty tree, looks out the window, but then when it gets dark, we like to like kind of hang out, watch TV together. And so having the day bed with just that little uh, strip there for me to put a drink, he kept knocking it down, switched it totally. So now the day bed is right over here to my left. I know you can't see it, but in the bottom picture, the day bed's right there. I have my little laptop desk. I can watch a show there, I can do some work, and then Lucky can sit on my lap and hang out, and I have the huge uh, like desk, I have that whole thing right there on my left to put drinks, to put chocolate, <laughs> to put whatever I want over there to the side, and my phone and everything else. So it's like, functionally, it works way better. Uh, I think aesthetically it's not as pretty, but I get like, zero visitors again so it doesn't really matter and yes he has less tunnel space but he's a small cat so i think he'll he'll uh adjust and i do love this i know it's a little weird because i face the wall which at first i was like oh that'll be depressing i want to look out the window but the thing was when the bed was facing out the window i never looked out the window even though i could have and uh honestly just looking at the wall helps me to focus a little more like having a boring workspace i know that sounds lame but it actually forces me to like just look at the wall and like block things out you know like those horses you see in central park and they have those little blinders on the right and the left it's kind of like what it is right now um so i'm extremely happy about this this move i went to a party <laughs> so i haven't gone to a party in forever so my friend uh vani who's there in the picture waving her hand she turned 40 uh this last month so she threw a birthday party at her house. Molly was with me. So usually I never go to, I've only been to Vani's house once and that's because Kylie was with me. And it just so happened, like such great luck, Molly was in town. She went with me. Um, she already knew Vani too from being here last time. So that was like, cause it's like, a, it's not that long. It's like a 35, 40 minute drive. Um, so yeah, so there were more people there. I just didn't take a lot of pictures. Uh, so that was fun. <laughs> Uh, and, oh, we watched the eclipse. So I, I don't know if anyone else watched the eclipse on Monday. I bought those special sunglasses for Molly and I to go down, walk down to the park, watch the eclipse. So that's us there at the bottom. There was a, so I had a 10 pack of those eclipse sunglasses and, you know, they won't be good again until 2045 when the next eclipse happens over land. So we just kind of gave them out to random people we saw at the park if they needed eclipse sunglasses. and. There was one girl there and she took a picture of us like watching the eclipse. It just turned out perfectly like with the eclipse up in the sky and her um, uh, us there watching it. So that's the only thing that we got. I will say, though, it made me realize because they were on the news. They were like, you must have ISO certified or whatever eclipse glasses. And they were really cheap. They were like ten dollars or whatever for or not even. I think it was like five dollars for ten of them. So the glasses i don't know if anyone else watched the eclipse but the glasses were so dark when you put them on you couldn't see anything it was like a total blackout and then when um 
we looked up, you could see the eclipse. But in grade school, I remember they had cellophane, you know, that cheap cellophane. And they were like, if you just hold a piece of cellophane up, it will be fine. <laughs> and so, you know, I think I was in fourth or fifth grade whenever the last eclipse was. And I was like, OK, so clearly my grade school, public school education <laughs> was totally wrong about that. Uh, personality tests. I don't know why I was like really into personality tests. Like, again, these are things that I might have posted on social media, but because I'm not on social media, you get to hear about these things. So the um, the Enneagram, I never take the Enneagram, mostly because I feel like I'm a little bit of everything. I don't even know if I really believe in the Enneagram, but I do like taking personality tests. And I talk about Clifton Strengths all the time. So I'm like, you know what, let me branch out and try something else. So uh, the Enneagram, my one, three, and eight dominate. I can say that I don't really think that eight is very much me, but so the test, this is through Truity. So out of all of your dominant strengths, I don't know how it determined this, but it said I'm a three, even though one and eight were like 98%. So I don't know if it's like something else that goes in there for the test, um, but yeah. So then I went and looked on Instagram. I did go on Instagram and looked at, you know how those people make those, um, those people, like someone will like love talking about a certain subject and they'll make these pretty little, I guess, word art graphics. And for some reason, reading about your Enneagram personality through these pretty word art graphics is much more entertaining than reading a text. So I pulled some of those to see if I'm like that. So the one, the three and the eight, again, I'm very not much not the protector. Um, so it's like, to me, it's like one of those touchy feely goals. Uh, but so the rule of thumb is for a Neagram, if you've never taken this, is that your top three, you should look at all the characteristics and then you decide whether or not you identify with those or you don't. So again, like, is that helpful? Is that not helpful? I think that's why I like Cl Clifton Strings more than I do a Neogram because it's not really that much of an exact science. Um, so then I took the Myers Brig again. So they say to take the Myers Brig every, I think it's five years to see if it changed, right? So your circumstances might have changed, your perspective on life, if you have children or you get married or change jobs or move to another country, like all of this in theory, could change your personality. And these are mostly used for work. So I was an ENTJ when I was 22. It was the first time I took that test was at GE. And I'm still today an ENTJ. I took it again. I'm still an ENTJ. It is one of the rarest. I don't know why. It's 1.8% uh, of people have ENTJ. And when I say I'm ENTJ, I'm very close to INTJ. So E, the N, uh, the T and I think it's uh, intuitive thinking and judgment all are like really strong across the board. Like I'm definitely NTJ and the E for extrovert versus introvert. I'm like right on the border. Um, so I feel like and that was the case back then, too. So. Um, so, yeah, ENTJ. Yes. And that guy up there who is that uh, Loki. He is an ENTJ. <laughs> I think Dr. Strange, it says they think is an ENTJ. Um, Miranda Priestley from that The Devil Wears Prada. So I guess like kind of like egomaniacs are ENTJs, which maybe that's a good thing that there are less of us. Uh, so anyways, uh, what else did I do? I did a chocolate hazelnut test. I was very, very much. So I tried the to Tony's Choco Lo Lonely. And that's because I saw on, I don't know if anyone watches on CNBC, there's a YouTube channel for CNBC called make it make it happen or something like that and it features all these different entrepreneurs and like we're talking like uh billionaire millionaire entrepreneurs that have mostly like i want to say brick and mortar kind of businesses so they featured this tony guy and so i was like oh i've never heard of this chocolate i'm gonna go try it i actually hated all the flavors <laughs> except for his chocolate hazelnut. And I was like, you know what? I really like hazelnut in my chocolate, which I don't like hazelnuts by themselves. So I was like, maybe I should branch out and try some more hazelnut. So anyways, I really like the milk chocolate crunchy quinoa. I don't like char dark chocolate. I know everyone thinks it's like better for your health or whatever. I just don't like the taste of it. I don't see any point in eating it. So I only do milk chocolate. But the bottom two weren't as good, and I found these at Whole Foods. They were, I guess I didn't realize, hazelnut butter. They were both hazelnut butter versus like, I like little chips of hazelnut. 
And the hazelnut butter was basically like a peanut butter, which kind of reminded me of a Reese's Pieces peanut butter cup. And I know loves, loads of people love peanut butter and chocolate, and I am like anti-peanut butter and chocolate. So I did not like either of those. And yes, I did run out today and I got the lint. I haven't had this in a while. Um, I guess I didn't realize it was hazelnut. I, I was, I guess nuts, I always just think like almonds or something, but yeah. So I'm very excited to try this after this live stream. So that's, uh, so when I say like the setup here is perfect for me, I put my tea up there, I have water and I have a chocolate bar with me while I'm working or watching a show. Um, so Kitty r and so I thought like after, so what happened was, uh, sorry, there's like something in my eye. So I thought like after Molly left, um, which again was so helpful. I don't know if anyone tracks their stress, but I track my stress with the Apple Watch. There's like an app. And so like my stress was really high the week before Molly got here. And I think it's because I was like, I felt guilty. I had so much stuff to do and I was trying to get everything done and prep for the retreat. Um, and then once she got here, all of my stress levels went to like uh, blissful, like they're all blues and greens. Again, and that's because I like having people around. And same thing, like the retreat, I was worried because, you know, I have anxiety, but because I like talking to people and when you're at a retreat and you're hosting it, you're always around people, it was like wonderful. So um, anyway, so I thought when she left, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so like, exhausted, I need to rest, but I actually was fine. So I worked Saturday and Sunday. So I did try to take Monday off just to have like a decompression day. So um, so yeah, so Lucky and I hung out in our new layout here in the living room and <laughs> we watched some movies. So if you were looking for good movies, again, I these are things I probably would have just posted to Instagram, is uh, The Irish Wish with Lindsay Lohan was just as cheesy and dorky as you thought it would be. It was completely predictable, um, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, I watched, I rented Argyle, very cute, uh, totally worth the $4.99 or whatever it is to rent. Um, I don't know when it's gonna be free streaming. And then I also watched the new An Hannah Swenson mystery on the Hallmark Channel. Uh, which I thought there would be ro more romance between her and the new guy, and there really wasn't, which I guess they're just kind of like setting it up. So yeah, so that was that was it. And I also watched all of my TV shows. So it was like a hardcore TV watching day with lots of chocolate. Um, so, so yeah, uh, let's see. Starry, starry night, what do you say? I think human design needs more stats on your birth. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Donna, I like peanuts with chocolate, but not a fan of peanut butter with chocolate. It appears I'm in the right place. <laughs> All right, so what else did I do? Uh, oh, Lucky got a new kitty tent, or tent, tunnel. I wrote tent, but he got a tunnel. Um, his old tunnel, I don't know where I tent. His old tunnel, so the thing that makes the tunnel rigid is it has like this wire going through it and it's coiled. So it keeps everything like a kitty tunnel cylinder. So at the end, because it's cheap, one of them, the metal had poked out. And I was worried he was going to get hurt. Yes, I'm that like hovering kitty mom. So I had tried to tape it, but it kept like pushing itself out. So anyways, I was worried about it. I threw it away. And so I got him this new kitty tunnel, which he actually loves much better. I was worried because it was black and dark, but maybe that like makes him feel like He's in a special incognito place. So anyway, so when I can't find the cat, he's usually just hanging out in his tunnel. He's so excited about this new thing. Um, and it was like $10, so it was a win-win all over. Uh, and I also finished a book last week. I know, I'm surprised too. So what I've been doing is I've been trying to read right before I go to bed uh, for just like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so I started reading this book because I really like Indian mysteries. Uh, ever since the uh, the other Indian mysteries, I really, I can't remember what his name was, but he stopped writing. So sad about that still. But these uh, Shamini Flint, they're pretty much, they're good. There's actually a TV show they're supposed to make out of it, like a three-part series on PBS, the British uh, PBS. I think it's called BritBox. I don't know. Is Karen here? Maybe Karen knows uh, what BritBox is. But in the US, uh, it just says BritBox is going to have a three-part series. They've already found a person to star in this. It was announced November 2022. So 
I don't know how long it takes to make something, but we're now into April 2024. So hopefully it'll come out in the next couple of years or something. Or who knows? Maybe they change their mind and they're not going to make it. But uh, yeah. So that's what's happening with that. Uh, and I started three new books this month. I started, so I did two in audio. Um, I did Third Eye by Felicia Day. So if you don't recognize her, she is actually one of the actors from Supernatural. I really loved her character. So sad that they killed her. They brought her back though, like her alternate reality person, but it wasn't as great. Um, so anyway, so she wrote a book, I guess. This is a while ago. I think this book is old from like 2014 or something. And it is... I uh, like a uh, fantasy witch, you know, fairies, kind of just like the TV show Supernatural almost. So anyways, I'm like three chapters into that and it's only available on audio. Uh, I don't know. It's like audio originals. I There's some of those out there. So if you're actually, I think if you're in audio plus, I'm not sure how it works. For some reason, some of the audio books are free for me. And when I say some of them free, I don't mean like the regular Jack Reacher kind of novels. They're like, the, this kind of book that are made specifically just for Audible, although this one wasn't for you to pay. Um, and then I also started Merit Badge Murder by Leslie Langtree. This is actually hilarious. Um, and it's not your typical cozy because she's like an ex uh, spy that's trying to hide out in a small town in Iowa. And this author I found after reading another book where she like there were four of them with her and Tracy Andrigetti and Diana Orgain. Um, and I just really loved her chapter. So that I'm listening to on Audible. And then the last one I'm reading is the Space Cozy. I'm so excited about Space Cozies. Um, and this is the pretty much the only Space Cozy that's come out uh, this year, last year, or even the year before, like in three or four years. So, and that's only available on Kindle. So that is what I am reading. Um, so <laughs> great question to ask yourself, like me. Is this a goal? I know we're back to goals now. So that's a recap of everything that happened in April. Now for your goal, you know, based on everything you've done, do you still want to do the goal? I am actually putting my goal on hold. I know. Usually, like, I have a... That's not true. I would like to think that I do a better job of planning, but I don't think I do. So I'm putting this goal on hold uh, just because it took so long to do the Lisa Seifert website and also it like is still broken. There are so many broken links on the website. Um, so yeah, so my goal is my, one of my, I should say like a to-do list item I had for this month was to put out all the 2025 planners. So instead of just making it a to-do list item, I'm just gonna make it the April goal so that those can still release next week on time. Um, and then I can stop fooling around. Cause whenever I have to do two things, it like distracts my brain for some reason. And being able to, one, I got rid of what, Card Deck Academy last month. I got rid of uh, basically everything, right? And I consolidated. It's honestly just made such a huge difference just this week. So I feel like just being able to get rid of that other goal of Squarespace, just forget about the website. It's broken. It's been broken. I'm just going to release the 2025 planners. I think that'll like help me to uh, focus and really make sure that I get it done. Um, so... What do I have to do? I have to make new covers for everything. Um, I have to proofread. So all the, like I said, all the files are done. Someone has to proofread them. So like back in the old days, uh, actually Ben used to proofread them for me. Um, so I don't think he'll be doing that again. <laughs> so um, I do have an assistant. She's gonna proofread them for me. She does a good, great job. Uh, and same thing, I have to update all the, like once those are proofread, then I'll update the Canva files, um, which are a little easier and those need to be proofread too. So, and I think I'm gonna go back on to creative market. It's been a few years and honestly, sales are slumping. So I thought it'd be a good time to go back on. And now I kind of know what I'm doing. So, or do I know what I'm doing? A little bit more I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna package things together as dated planners versus before I just like released everything and then I had all these random products out there, so. That's the plan. Um, so after you make your new goal or recommit to your original April goal, then you wanna say, what tools or courses do you need to make sure that you can like get this done? Um, I actually don't need any training. <laughs> I know, I actually know what I'm doing. Um, I just need to not work on anything else. So that's why I'm saying I'm definitely not doing uh, the Pretty Fabulous website, probably won't do any YouTube updates. Um, I just wanna make sure I get that done. Um, oh, Karen, I haven't heard of BritBox, huh? All right. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. A sci-fi 
a sci to sci-fi space cozy. Yeah, who knew? I think I really hope it takes off as like a subgenre. Um, and then the other question you have to ask is, what does your week look like? So mine is pretty low key, mostly because I actually blocked out this whole week to do nothing but recover from the cozy writing retreat, uh, which again, I actually don't need to recover from. It was like totally fine. Uh, so I have like lots of free time this week. But if you are looking for tools, like I always say, I use ClickUp to write everything I'm doing for the week. And then for that day, I just use Llama Life so that I know what tasks I need to make it through. Um, and my priorities for this week are the 2025 planner and that's it, uh, nothing else. And stretch goals, I actually have stretch goals because I think I can, who knows, like right now I think I can get it all done, we'll see. Um, but I wanna do the pet planner, I want to do the Squarespace updates if I can. Um, possibly looking to setting up Shopify for the site instead of a Squarespace and start the weekly newsletter. So these are stretch goals if I make them. But again, like the book Finished by John Acuff said, there will be things that I can look forward to if I finish my first goal, which is getting the 2025 planners updated. So that's a wrap on everything. Uh, so if you are wondering what you should do at this point, I would say the first step is to just recap 2024. If anything, it kind of like just gives you uh, a little self esteem booster. Like I did something, right? Like something got accomplished. I wasn't doing nothing. I did stuff. Even if it is just looking for chocolate, you know, you did something. <laughs> um, and then the second thing is revisit your April goal. Like, is it really something you want to do? Like maybe you're like me and you're just going to put it on hold. Um, and then determine like, do you need help or do you need, like, I definitely need help with the proofreading. Cause when I proofread my own numbers, I, I like, if I saw one, three, four, when I look at it again, I'm probably gonna see one, three, four, but in my mind, I'm gonna think it's one, two, three. So somebody else, like another outside party has to look at the numbers to proofread them. Um, and then plan out the rest of the week. So for me, I'm just trying to not plan, I'm not. I'm trying to not add anything to my schedule. The only thing I added to my schedule, which has nothing to do with anything, is adding personal training. So I bought personal training sessions, like a year and a half ago, like back in 2022. Anyways, I didn't use them. I got an exception because I had COVID. And then anyway, so now they're finally like, she's like, which is fair. She's like, they are going to expire this month if you don't use them. And I only have like three sessions left. So I'm actually going later today, the next Tuesday, then the Tuesday after that. So that'll use up my three sessions before May 1st, which is when they expire. So that's the only new thing that I've added to my schedule. Um, anybody have any questions or any thoughts? Um, poke it up party. I do the same thing with numbers. Yeah, it's so easy. It's so weird. Like how, how did I just not see that glaring error? So adorable photo of Lucky. Thank you. I know my phone, if you saw my phone, they'd think I was like a psychotic cat person because 90% of the photos are just of Lucky. <laughs> there's no photos and if you want to see photos from the retreat molly did a really great job of taking photos i posted all of those photos in the wrap up uh that i did yesterday so so yeah so i hope everyone's having a great april and that you are now more motivated to finish your goals or redeclare a new one and i will see all of you next week so next week is the week that we will be launching the 2025 planner so we'll do you know the dated uh, the annual the monthly the weekly the digital so all of that will get done uh through the course of next week all right and i will see everyone later bye